Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. Today we're going to do a review of this G Loomis E6X inshore spinning rod. This is a high quality rod. Multiple people had asked about it, so I went ahead and picked one up and, and gave it a test. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you about the, the really the on the water performance that I found on it, the pros and the cons. I'm not affiliated with this company in any way. Just wanted to share with you at least what I found so that you, you know, you can make an educated decision if you want to get one of these or not. So first we'll talk about some of the pros and on this one in particular, this is an eight foot rod. This is, this is a little bit longer than what I normally use. I normally go for seven foot, six inch rods, but so I went for the eight, I just felt it in the store. And, and the one that I, that I liked the best was the, uh, the eight foot heavy power rod, which is, which is rare as well. Usually I do like a medium to medium heavy, but uh, this, this, uh, this line of rods seems to have their power rating a, a little bit elevated. So like the, the heavy, really feels more like like a, a medium heavy even a medium on some of the some of the other rods that i use anyhow as far as the the pro what i really like about this rod is that it really helps me just sling lures it helps me get a lot of distance on, on light lures when i'm fishing the flats that is uh, obviously very very important the more distance you can cover statistically you're going to catch more fish and what it enables me to do is is just you know stay in one spot and I'll show you some footage of this happening. Is it was a windy day, the water was crystal clear, the sky was blue, kind of like today. It's just a hard day to, to sneak up on fish up in shallow water. So I, I just I just settled the boat down and I was just stayed in one spot and I was just casting. I was just distance casting across all the different potholes. And, uh, and with this rod, I was able to, you know, to get far enough where I could land over the hole and then retrieve it back through it. And here's what happened. That far pothole over there. Bunch of fish there. There we are. Very nice fish. There's a bunch of fish in there earlier, so we got one of them. That's a good fish. Otis. Otis on. Stay, stay in the boat. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Otis, you crazy dog. Oh, jeez. Nice red. Nice fish. About a little over 32 inches. Yeah, so the distance is great, but uh, but also with this blank, I do feel that I still am able to maintain a good amount of control. So I, I do a decent amount of sight fishing. I've been out, I've taken out, you know, when I'm actually just specifically going for sight fishing. And, and even with this, I do feel comfortable making those accurate casts, even, even skip casting. It took a while. Uh, when I first started uh, started with the skip cast, you know, opener docks or mangroves, it was very difficult. But after just forcing myself to do it for a little bit, I actually became uh, quite comfortable. And, and now, again, I just take it on sight fishing trips. And, and here's some footage where I was on a paddleboard going one direction, and, uh, and so the, obviously the wind was taking me. And so I, I saw a nice red fish, and I had really one shot at it. And this, you know, again, I was able to make a really just a targeted targeted cast straight to it. Fortunately, the red uh, the red bit and ended up catching another nice red. Uh, courtesy of the rod. Cast it about 10 feet over him. Ooh, got him, got him, nice. That's a good rib. All right, that's a good fish. All right, so the third pro I'd like to talk about is just the fact that it's made in the USA. It's made, it says it's made in Washington state. I always like to see that. It's actually rare now that, that fishing rods are, are made here in the US. So that is uh, certainly another good thing to, to consider when making a rod purchase. All right, so, so now for the cons. You know, first of all, it, the price. You know, price is, uh, is probably the, the biggest one I could think of. It, is this is just more expensive than, than a lot of the rods that I, that I typically use. It's uh, a little bit over $200, which, which isn't crazy expensive, but it, but it is, you know, it is on the, the higher end, but it is, it is a high quality blank. So I don't think that it's mispriced. It's just, it's just a very quality, quality rod. The other part is just the fact that, you know, they're kind of hard to find. That's another thing that I've had a hard time finding this rod in particular. It uh, seems like a lot of people like the uh, like the medium to medium heavy uh, action rods or heavy power rods. And so not many people carry this one in, in particular. The, so one thing I don't like about this line is just the fact that their power ratings are so much different than, than many others. Anyhow, so it kind of, it makes the, the buying purchase a little bit more confusing than it otherwise would be. 
So I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this rod. If you've used it, you know, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. This is really designed to be a conversation. It's, uh, it's not a lecture. So be very, very interested to hear your thoughts, pros or cons, right? It could go either way. And also, if you've tested different powers, right? If you've tested the medium power or the medium heavy, love to hear your thoughts on that. So anyhow, that is the, uh, the quick review. As I said before, you have love to hear your feedback. And if you have any questions as well, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Hope you can get on the water soon and catch some big ones.